All right, gonna try and make some grouse soup today. Starting off with a grouse stock made from scratch. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. I just started off by cutting as much meat off the grouse breast as I could. Same with the legs. And it's fine if you leave it some on there because that'll just get added to the stock and make it taste a lot better. So over here we got four grouse breasts from two birds, a gizzard, and some leg meat. It's pretty hard to get the leg meat off rough grouse. It's very tendony. So if it's still raw, you're going to want to roast it a little bit. And you can also just add your veggies that you're going to put in the stock too. So you brown them up a little bit. You can keep the skins on the onions, keep the skins on the garlic. You know, we've got some celery butts. You can have the ends of carrots. All that stuff is good flavor. And when you put it in the oven for a little bit, just to give it some color, it'll be even more flavorful. So we'll do that. Uh, not quite enough color yet. Just enough time to take the Bodie out. Let's go. Don't pee on your leg again, bud. All right. Looks good enough to me. A little brown on everything. All right. Now we got it all back in the pot. Get a little more brown real quick. And then we'll start filling it up with water. Just want to fill it with water so it just barely covers everything. This is going to be simmering for hours and hours. Probably won't even be eating the soup today. But the longer it goes, the better it'll taste. Also, I'm going to add some aromatics. We got some dried parsley, fresh would be better, some bay leaves, some cracked pepper, if you can get a hold of whole peppercorns that'd be better. Just a tiny bit of salt for right now, I'm um, hoping that might draw out any blood that's left in the bird. Um, you can obviously add more salt at the end to taste, but just a tiny bit of salt right now, definitely don't want to overdo it. Got some rosemary fresh, fresh thyme, and a few sage leaves, and then all the leaves from celery. I'm going to put all this in right now. Give it a good mix. Turn it down to simmer. Pretty much as low as it'll go now that it's boiling. Definitely don't want to keep it boiling all day, just a very low simmer. It's all mixed in, it's already smelling really good. And you're just going to leave this uncovered for basically as long as you have the patience for. Um, right now it's noon, we'll see how it's doing in three or four hours, but I'll probably leave it even longer than that. Okay, we'll go. We'll go for a walk. We got nothing but time to kill. Go on. Welcome to Beaverville. These really fuck this lake up good. This is why beavers build dams. Floods areas, kills trees, makes it easier to cut the trees down to build more dams. Pretty cool actually. Just wish we wouldn't do it here. And here it is. Damming up the Platte River, which flows through right through Ransom Lake. 
So now the lake's all risen up. Here's his lodge, which is kind of weird that it's over land. If anybody wants to come and trap and remove a beaver, this is a good spot to do it. Can't even walk around the lake this year. Or Elmira Township could come and do it since it's their property. Beavers also like to eat the woody vegetation that grows in flooded areas. Kind of like this. That is likely their main reason for damming up spots. Gives them more food in the long run. Takes a long time for the payoff, but it's working. Here's one of the bridges. Almost completely underwater now. She used to sit a good two to three feet above the river as it enters the lake right here. Bodie enjoys it. But can't continue on past here. It's all flooded. Fucking beaver. Very comfy lawn chair here. Made by Eastern Michigan University's Parsons Center. Up there. Yeah. Yep, good view of the river. Some real craftsmanship. One of this. Oh, you can fall asleep in that bitch. <laughs> better definitely gonna let it keep going three hours let it go another three hours so cousin Zach we shot another grouse today while I'm still making my stock and there's time for me to throw parts of it in there we got legs wings it's kind of like his shoulder and then this is like the spine and part of the neck and some skin. All are parts of the bird that have a lot of uh, cartilage and connective tissue and skin and stuff in. Which makes a great stop. So we're just going to brown that up real quick. Get it in for the rest of the stock. Alright, it's been about five hours. I'm going to throw this new grouse in. Didn't plan on this part, but got to take advantage of it. Also going to add a lot more water. I've already added some before this, but he just keeps cooking down. Well, it's been almost 12 hours. Put a lot of water in there over the course of the day. Drain it out, put it in the fridge. And there we go, a little over a liter of grouse stock. And I'll be using this in a soup, maybe two. Pulled out some of the legs and wings, they still have a lot of meat on them. And I'll rip that off and put it in the soup too. All right, now that we got our grouse stock made, you can really do a lot of things with this stuff, you know, make all kinds of soups. You can use it to make stuffing, various casseroles, I mean, anything you would put veggie or chicken broth in. Um, although today I'm going to try and use it to make like a cream of mushroom grouse stew, I guess. The rough grouse is usually paired with cream of mushroom soup that you buy in a can. A lot of people like to roast it in the oven. With that, and I'm just gonna try and make cream and mushroom soup from scratch. So we got the grouse here, you know, some breast meat, the leg meat, and the, we got a gizzard here. A lot of people don't eat that; they either throw it away or feed it to their dog. But it's pretty good muscle. I mean, grouse don't really have teeth, so they use this gizzard muscle combined with pebbles and little rocks that they'll eat. To crush up all their food to help them digest it. Then we got some morel mushrooms that I found on uh, Memorial Day a couple months ago. 
coated them in flour and froze them. So now they're all nice and separated. I did find them up on sand dunes, so there is a little bit of sand inside of them. Then we got, I think this is a parsnip, a rutabaga, garlic, carrots, uh, just regular store-bought mushrooms, just to add to the mushroomy part. Some rosemary and thyme. Um, and then I'll put some cream in there too. So first we're going to start and make the roux that you kind of need to make for a creamy soup. Which is not that complicated. So roux are just basically equal parts melted butter and flour. Um, and you just kind of cook it until it turns brown. The darker it gets, the more rich it is, and darker roux are usually used in like gumbo and dark stews, I guess. I mean, I'm kind of making a cream of mushroom soupy stew here, so I don't want it to be too dark. Just going to wait for the butter to melt, and then you're just going to slowly add in the flour, whisking it so it doesn't clump up, and then let it cook. You got to be really careful though, you definitely don't want to burn it, and then you'll add a liquid. I'll be adding some of my broth, some beer, um, and then I'll probably add some of the cream at this point. You can add the cream later on too, I'll just kind of play it by ear here. I couldn't really film that part because it takes two hands, but I basically added, you know, half a stick of butter and a quarter cup of flour. You just kind of want that pancake batter consistency, and you will always want to be stirring it so it doesn't burn, and I'm just going to wait for it to turn kind of a goldeny brown color, and then I'll start adding liquids. Alright, it's pretty much at the color I want, so I'm going to add some old Milwaukee beer here. You can really use anything, it doesn't have to be alcohol. You can use white wine, red wine, water. I'm also going to put some stock in. Right now I've added about a half a can of beer, then maybe two-thirds of a cup of my grouse stock. And now it's kind of this thick consistency. You kind of want it to look like, you know, what cream of mushroom soup looks like right when you get it out of the can. You know, before you add a can of water to it, that thick, almost solid consistency here. We'll let this cook a little bit more, just to incorporate everything we added. Maybe it'll darken up a little bit more. And then take it off the heat. Move on to the next step. Oh, I forgot to add a little bit of cream to the roux. You don't have to do it at this point. You don't even have to add it to the roux. You can do it later on, but I'm just gonna add a little bit now. See what happens. Yeah, now it looks more like cream of mushroom. All right, to the Dutch oven, we're gonna add our grouse. And our mushrooms here. Chop them up a little bit. And then our store-bought mushrooms with some minced onion and garlic. Get all that in there. Just stir it around, brown up the grouse, cook down the mushrooms, then we'll start adding everything else. I also added some more fresh thyme and fresh rosemary and some salt and pepper. All these ingredients are already in the grouse stock, but that got cooked for 12 hours, so a lot of it kind of cooked down and faded away, so it's nice to add more fresh herbs when you're making the soup gonna brown all this stuff up. The flour that was on the morel mushrooms will help thicken things up even more. So I added about half a liter of the grouse stock first just because things were starting to stick to the bottom of the pot here and that's not a bad thing but it's good if you can scrape it off because it just adds more flavor and you need a nice thin liquid to detach all that stuff on the bottom of the pan so I'm just gonna scraping all that off. And we'll add the roux and the veggies, and maybe a little water. So I forgot to add onion to the veggies. So I minced some onion up and put it in first 
with all the mushrooms and the bird. And then I cut some bigger chunks, put it in here with the carrots, the rutabaga, and the parsnip. You can add potatoes instead of rutabaga and parsnip. I just like those ones. They're a little more spicier, a little more of a kick, more flavor. But potatoes would be just fine. Alright, pretty much everything that's going to go in the stew is in there. Um, seems a little watery right now, but a lot of that will cook down. I'm just going to wait for it to come back up to a boil here on the stove. And then we'll put it in the oven at 350 for, I don't know, it'll probably take like 45 minutes or so. I'll check on it every once in a while. Oh, and for good measure, I'll add a little bit of cream. A little more cream. Well, I took it out of the oven after about 35 minutes, and I forgot to account for how much water would be released by the vegetables, so it did get kind of runny in there. So I'm just going to finish cooking it on the stove with the lid off, and a lot of that water will evaporate, and it should thicken back up again. should be ready here in a couple minutes. Well, it's starting to get to the consistency that I'd like. Um, some things that I would have added to it if I had had them here would have been a little bit of Worcestershire sauce would have been nice. Uh, the light beer was all I had for alcohol. I think white wine could have been a little better or even a little bit of whiskey or bourbon mixed with water. Um, and also like a bag of frozen peas I think could have added a little more color. Also, I wish I would have saved all the wild leeks I found in the spring and added some of them just for more natural ingredients and the leaves would have made good color in there too. Well, there we go. A creamy stew made with wild rough grouse and wild morel mushrooms. Um, it's actually a really good year for rough grouse. We got these last week in the western upper peninsula of Michigan. Saw quite a bit of birds, more than I ever have in my life. Definitely at the top of the population cycle. And it's great to take advantage of it and make things like this. Well, I hope you enjoyed it.